here in London, ahead of a huge night of World Championship Boxing, December 10th at the Manchester Arena, live and exclusive on Sky Sports Box Office, Showtime across America, and all of our other international broadcasters around the world. Sponsored by William Hill, StubHub, and JD Sports, it gives me huge pleasure to announce the second defence of Anthony Joshua's IBF Heavyweight World Championship against number eight run, rated current IBF Intercontinental Champion Eric Molina. This is a huge night of World Championship boxing. Not only Anthony Joshua against Eric Molina, but of course yesterday we saw the fun and games between Derek Chisora and Dillian White, an official eliminator for the WBC Heavyweight World Championship. Kalia Fai, bidding to become the first man from Birmingham to win a world championship against two-weight world champion Luis Conception, the return of Scott Quigg at 126 pounds at the featherweight limit, and a whole host of action, Katie Taylor making her second appearance, um, Luis Ortiz, the heavyweight as well, and a fantastic British light heavyweight championship fight between Frank Bruglioni and champion Jose Burton. We're going to talk more on the fight shortly and hear from all the members across the table, but for right now, we're going to go from Andy Burton for Sky Sports News for some live questions. Yeah, gentlemen, we are live on Sky Sports News HQ today, so just a reminder to keep the language in check, which I'm sure won't be a problem from both of you guys. Anthony, it's the first time that we've seen you in the ring, as, as Eddie just said, since that defence against Dominic Brazil. So you've had a good break. Relatively speaking, it's a long break for you in terms of inactivity. Do you come into this refreshed, or is there a danger that you're perhaps a little rusty? I won't say rusty. I'll definitely say... I'm not going to say camp is smooth, I've had the greatest camp ever, but it's always tough. It's always, you know, exhausting on the body, but a break is needed. I live in the gym. That's what I've been doing since I was 18, and I haven't taken my foot off the, off the gas pedal. So I wouldn't say it's rusty because I've learned how to fight. I've developed that, that ring craft now. So it's just basically expressing that every time I go out under the bright light. So what we do in the dark corners of the gym, kind of managed to gain experience time and time again, Monday to Friday, to just express what I do time and time again when I go out under the bright light. So no problem having a break for me. I'm just looking forward to getting back in the ring and then building towards 2017. In terms of schedule and the camp, I guess camp started before your opponent was confirmed. And obviously there was so much talk about Klitschko being a, a possible opponent for December 10th. Was it in any way unsettling that at the beginning of camp you didn't know what you were preparing for? Not necessarily. I started camp really knowing I was going to get into camp. So just so I don't get injured, I started preparing my body for what was to come. So that was the initial start of camp. And then I started training ahead of schedule, preparing. And I don't even really want to mention Klitschko too much at the minute, because that's not the relevant opponent. You know, I've got Molina. You know, he's going to be across the room from me December 10th. He's a tough competitor. When I look at it, I think he was the toughest out of the few. So I thought that's a good challenge for myself. And that's the man I've got to focus on. So I always knew I'd have someone who's game. And right now we're competing for a championship belt. So I think everyone's going to up their levels by 50 to 60%. So the people I've seen and watched time and time again are the people I'm going to face. So I have to put Klitschko or David Price or whoever was in the pecking order aside and focus on what's in front of me. And obviously what would have been the dangers had you not done that? Well, focus on what's in front of me. Yeah. You'll only find out December the 10th. Um, Everyone's going to train and do us and, and try and reach their potential in training camp. But you only find out, you know, come fight night because there's nowhere to hide on that night. So everything that you've been thinking and been preparing for will be revealed come fight night. So I could only tell you what effects I would have had on me after the fight. And it doesn't have any impact on your motivation for this fight, the fact that it's Eric rather than Klitschko? No way, no way. Because, you know, I'm not going to, let's say, for instance, Klitschko has a jab that stands a couple of inches away from his face and I'm going to wait to counter punch Klitschko. Could be waiting all night for that. So I just train as if I'm going to win. I train because I enjoy it and I train because it's what I do really. So um, if I was fighting Klitschko at Molina, I have the same ambition and that's to win. What did you make of Eric's performance against Deontay Wilder? He survived three knockdowns, showed great heart, courage and determination before ultimately losing. What did you take from watching that? That's why I think that's why he's here now really. You know, uh, great fire, it takes massive courage to step into that ring. And I think, uh, you know, Deontay Wilder is supposed to be known as like a, a one-punch knockout artist and he stood up to a lot, of his, a lot of his punches, so it shows that, you know, this man's here to try and push the champions to their limits and try and take what they've got half for. What's in store for Eric in Manchester on December 10th? Um, potentially the usual. Um, 
yeah, combinations and a good night of boxing. Eric, welcome to London. Welcome to, to England. Big night on December 10th. Anthony's opponents usually come to these press conferences, but also these fights with a dream. They end up on their back. Why will that not happen to you? Well, you know, first of all, I uh, want to thank everybody for coming out here. You know, I, it's me and my guys, we just settled in. And uh, I've been in these fights before, you know what I mean? And uh, I have no amateur experience, number one. And uh, I'm learning on the job. But one thing you can look at, look at the job I've been doing, and it's been getting better every fight. Um, the Deontay Wilder fight, I fought five rounds. I don't know if Anthony, but Anthony knows I fought five rounds with a busted ankle. So everything you saw in that fight was done on one, one ankle. So, you know, that's the type of fight that I'm coming in to give this, this young, young, young man here. I'm gonna fight with everything that I got. If I'm hurt, if, if, if I'm conscious, I'm coming to fight. Um, and I know that I could win the fight with one punch at any given moment. And uh, that's the heavyweight, that's the heavyweight game. That's why we're all here. That's why you guys are so excited about this young man. Because it's the heavyweight division and anything could happen in any second. Anthony Joshua knocks people out, he hurts people. Are you not taking a massive risk with your own personal safety, learning on the job against a guy with his punch power? That's part of the heavyweight game, you know? When you look up and down the lineup, you look up and down the IBF rankings, you know, I knew this fight was coming my way because I know nobody wants to fight this guy. Let's be real here. All you guys, you, you guys want to call Klitschko. You guys want to call these other guys. They don't want to fight him. They don't want to fight. They'd rather go fight other people. They'd rather go fight for the other belts than to go through this man right here. You're looking at somebody that's sitting here that has been in these fights. I've been in with Wilder. Nobody wants to get in with Wilder. Nobody wants to get in with him. I'm here willing because he's, th he's got something that I want and I, I don't have the option to go in any other direction. I got to go through men like him and that's what I'm here to do. And I'm here to give everything that I got to take that belt. So what's he got in store December 10th? He's going to have the toughest fight of his career. That's, that's, that's a guarantee. Thank you. Eddie, one last question for you just while we're live, please. Can, can you confirm, is it right that Klitschko is, is planning or possibly going to come to Manchester on December 10th? Is he going to be there? Yeah, he'll be ringside. I mean, you know, away from the focus of these guys, I think it's disrespectful to talk about Klitschko when he, Anthony's got to come for Eric Molina. And it's, it's wrong to talk about Klitschko when Anthony Joshua's got, I believe, the toughest fight of his career to date on December the 10th. Klitschko will be there, we'll work behind the scenes, and of course we've got a plan for Anthony Joshua's future beyond Eric Molina, but he's got the toughest job to do, which is to be triumphant on December the 10th. Gentlemen, thank you. You know how exclusive broadcast partners Sky Sports do such a fantastic job. They give us the platform to grow UK talent. In a couple of weeks' time, we've got the debut of Katie Taylor on November the 26th at Wembley Arena. I'm so, so excited about that. And next week, uh, we promote our first international show in Monaco um, with a fantastic card, Luis Ortiz against Malik Scott, um, Martin Murray against Dmitry Chudinov, Jamie McDonald defending his world crown against Liborio Solis, and a fantastic fight between the world champion Jason Sosa and Stephen Smith. We wouldn't be able to do this without the support of Sky Sports, and I'm going to pass over to the head of boxing, Adam Smith. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, very, very excited about uh, all of those uh, big nights coming up. Katie Taylor. Uh, turning pro November the 26th especially. I think that's terrific. Monaco is going to be fantastic. We've had great shows on Sky Sports already this year. The likes of uh, Tony Bellew and Anthony Crawler, of course, and the big Birmingham show, which was terrific from top to bottom. But one guy we've missed, we've missed AJ, haven't we? Uh, he hasn't fought since June. It's the longest time uh, out as a pro. I know he's been itching to get back in the ring. And we want to see him defending his IBF title against a real tough guy in, in an Eric Molina. You know, we, uh, we watched that Deontay Wilder fight I think people thought Deontay Wilder would deal with him really quickly. It didn't happen. You know, he goes to Poland, he beats Thomas Adamek, he shows he can travel. And I like his attitude here. He's coming, he's got, he's, he's got a prize. He wants that title. And he's going to try and give Joshua the biggest and toughest fight of his life. And that's great to see. I think it's going to be a really exciting one on December the 10th. Obviously, it's a stack card. Dylan White and Derek Chisora, they love each other, don't they? We've got that. We've got Kaliafai going for a world title. I, I believe in Kaliafai. I think he's a terrific talent. You know, and Katie back and, and Luis Ortiz, you know, is he one of the best, if not the best heavyweights in the world? The division is so wide open at the moment, but Anthony Joshua is back to defend his title and uh, really excited to be part of the journey. You'll get all the build up 
The gloves are off, the behind the ropes, countdowns and everything ahead of the big night on December the 10th in Manchester. What a great fight city, some great nights we've had there and I expect another one. And these two guys will give us a really good show. Thank you, Roberto. Um, I've seen stuff on social media. You guys seem to have a real close-knit team over there and all working in unity to try and become the heavyweight world champion on December 10th. Yes, uh, well, first of all, Eddie, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, Sky Sports, Showtime, uh, Don King Productions, uh, for everyone involved for putting this together, Eddie, on, on such short notice. and. Uh, as soon as we got wind of the situation, we just pretty much tried to get him prepared, even without knowing. So, but we felt it was coming. Um, but yes, uh, Eric is a very resilient fighter. Uh, you know, a lot of fighters go through very different roads to where they have to get to in this sport. And uh, Eric's Eric's gone a, a long way, and it's been very uh, trying but I've never seen anybody so persistent to wanting to fulfill what he wants to do, his objective. You know, he talks about that angle, but keep in mind, this is a man that has a master's degree that was working at a full-time job, working with students at the time when he fought Wilder. That was a five-week camp. And what he did in that night, working with students, uh, you know, nine to five, training after work, you know, it just shows the work ethic that it takes to do this sport. So, uh, just to give you all a little, uh, you know, background in terms of what, what we did this year, you know, he, he took time off and he dedicated this time to his craft. So, essentially, you know, he put his faith, took a leap of faith, and here we are today, speaking in front of all you people, you know. Uh, we're here. We're here to make history the first Mexican heavyweight champion. That's what we want to do. That is our objective. Whatever we have to do to make it happen, that's what we're doing. We're here right now on no sleep, doing what we love. And that, that's what we're going to do. Thank, thank you, Roberto. And thank you, thank all you. of you all. Eric, thanks for an opportunity. Not, not just Anthony Joshua, any heavyweight, you told me. Anyone who wants it on December 10th. Luis Ortiz, David Price, Dillian White, it doesn't matter. Anthony Joshua, of course, was the number one goal. How hungry are you? For this, how hungry are you to become, like you added, uh, Roberto said, the first Mexican heavyweight world champion? I mean, definitely the momentum from the from the Adam fight, you know, going into Poland and uh, knocking out Tomas Adam, which had never been done, never been put on his back for 10 seconds. Um, we had a lot of momentum, and uh, I, I felt it was time to take some time off from work and put 100% and uh, put put everything that I had into this, and. Uh, you know, when, when we finally signed to fight, fight Joshua, uh, you know, a lot of people were like, hey, man, you worried about going to fight him over there? You worried about this? And, you know, in this sport, you worry about other things, or I worry about other things. To go a year without a, 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 without a, with, with, without a chance, without a, a big fight. So, you know, I was, I was on Eddie, hey, I want a big fight. It didn't matter who. I didn't, it didn't matter who, it didn't matter where, it didn't matter what time. I was I was ready to fight and I was ready to, to, to come and bring everything that I got and continue the momentum. Just so happened that, you know, uh, fighters didn't wanna didn't wanna do what they what what they didn't didn't wanna take certain fights and you know the the fight comes my way. I'm thankful and you know, we're ready to go. I know you feel you, you've justified your shot at the title. Obviously, a great performance against Wilder, a big win against Adam Egan. I know the other people that were put into the pot for the fight, you were quick to, to poo-poo them and say, no, no, I'm the guy that, that should be next. Yep. Yeah, um, back at home, you know, people know me as a certain type of fighter. They know me for, for one thing that I, since the first day of my career, I lost in the first round. But I want to I wanted just let the people here know something right here. With, with the back of my shirt says, says that, that, that says the R is bouncing back. Okay, it, it's not just words. In this game, boxing is the most brutal sport when it comes to bouncing back. Once you lose, everybody's everybody's gone. They're all gone from your side. In this game, you know it's more than to say, "Hey, I'm gonna bounce back." There's some fighters out here, you know, that want that want to bounce back, that want to say they want certain fights. Put yourself in a spot to do it. 
I put myself in a fight with Wilder. I put myself in a fight in Poland against Adamak on his on his in his country to bounce back and show the world who I am. You know, in, the, in, in this game, I, I tell fighters, you know what? Get out there and prove yourself. Show what you can do, and then call out certain fighters. And, and, and you know, I just feel like the, the fighter like me, with working with Don King and working with a lot of low-key people, and or now, I mean, Don doesn't really do many shows. I don't have an easy road to get here. I got to do it the hard way. So, you know, I, I feel like I earned my ticket here. Thank you, Eric. It sounds like you're going to give every ounce of your heart and soul on December 10th. For sure. Yeah. Good man. And to Eric Molina, and realize you've got a, a real job on December 10th against a very, very hungry, hungry man. Perhaps the hungriest man you may have fought so far in your career. Yeah, most definitely. Especially at the stage right now, with what's at stake, especially in this, uh, as you said, with Sky Sports and everyone here supporting and giving us massive attention. It's a good chance to show what you're capable of as well. Um, I think, I don't want to talk about my, my story as such and where I've come from and everything, but I'm here and I don't play games. I'm serious about what I do and I'm serious about moving forward. And uh, it's hard because sometimes I don't come here with a script. You know, all I can do is speak from the heart and I just look forward to just competing and showing what I'm capable of and that's what it comes down to. And the best man will walk away. And I said it before, whatever Eric's destiny is, will be shown December 10th. If his destiny is to become the, uh, the heavyweight champion, so be it. My, my destiny is to continue on the way I am, on a dominant performance. And, and that's just how it goes in my head. So I wish him and his team the best of luck. And I appreciate everyone out here supporting him. From the top to the bottom of the show, you know, the whole undercard will be an explosive night of boxing. Obviously, uh, the heavyweight world has been blown apart in the last probably four to six weeks. Um, so much has been going on and uh, I've tried to keep you in the loop but a lot of it has been happening behind closed doors. But really you're, you're a fighter that you don't even really want to know about it. You just stick in the gym and, and you know you get the call and the team will decide and, and you're quite happy doing your own thing and letting it, the whole path unfold in front of you naturally. Yeah, like because no one, I don't really get involved in other people's issues and business and what people have got to say because it wasn't so long ago when no one cared what I was doing anyway. So that's why I don't really have to prove myself to anyone except for myself. So I don't really entertain much else than what me and my circle have got going on and what we're trying to achieve. And um, yeah, so there's so much going on. The division's been blown wide open, but people have been saying that since 20, 2011, 2012. You know, the division's wide open and they'll forever sing that until, you said, a true dominant force like the days of Tyson's and Holyfield's come back and they like the division. And it's not so much about the name brands and the hype. I don't think, I think it's about people like Eric that are saying they're coming with 100% heart. It's not about hype. You know, this is a glad gladiatorial sport and we come together and pop. And, you know, recently there's people that have been brain damaged and passed away in the ring. So, put our lives on the line. So, forget the hype. We're coming together and we're just trying to bring boxing back to where it was. And finally, away from the Lions Den, yeah, as yeah. it's called at the O2, up to Manchester. Yeah. Incredible pre-sales, uh, sold out yesterday within 11 minutes. The general sales today, I think we sold 15,000 tickets in just five minutes. Huge support for you and a chance for you to go north and take this show on the road up in Manchester. <laughs> yeah, it seems that the product don't fail us, so we're on the roll. I think. It gives people an opportunity to get out of London, have a little weekend away. Manchester's a beautiful place and uh, I think it should be good. I think it should be entertaining, but I, I'm there to provide entertainment, so I've got a job at hand first and foremost before I start celebrating. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to stay focused in the meantime. I don't mind that it's in Manchester because inevitably it's just like the rings move from one arena to another, but the same rules and regulations apply throughout the, throughout the contest. So um, yeah. Manchester, the Lions then, it's all the same job, you know, same ropes, one referee, and just me and Eric at the end of the day, the whole team steps out of the ring and it's just left to us to handle business. Thank you, Anthony. That's December the 10th, and we can't wait to hear from uh, the Olympic gold medalist making his second defence, Anthony Joshua, and the challenger, a very, very hungry Eric Molina. This is going to be a great fight. Face to face,